Yo, what's going on guys? This is Tito back with another video and today I'm gonna be reviewing and talking about nifty little things about this Android PGSI Developer Preview version 4 on Redmi Note 5 Pro. And if you wanna see how you can install it on your Redmi Note 5 Pro, here is a card coming from top right corner of the screen. So without further ado, let's begin. So here is the home screen. Of course, we do have the Google Pixel Launcher by default here. We have the time at the top left corner now and the SIM and Wi-Fi signals are as usual to the right corner. And yes, Volti is working super fine here, but this HD logo just stays on the status bar and we can't remove it from this notification panel, which says device is HD capable. Well, hello there, MIUI one users. I know this is annoying, but would you look at that, the new quick toggles and the notification panel. Pretty dope stuff. I will be showing you the quick settings panel in depth later on, but now we are talking about the launcher. So let's get back in. So we have the tap and hold functionality here on the apps and swiping up a little bit from the bottom gets you to the recent apps panel here and you can swipe all the way up if you want to get the app drawer. And if you tap and hold on the blank area on the launcher, you will get the launcher settings, widgets and wallpaper options. By the way, widgets are working fine here. I will just show you the launcher settings. The customizations up here are very minimal as it's pure stock Android. The good thing here is you can change icon shapes to square or circle and more. And in the recents, you can just swipe up if you want to remove an app from memory. Now let me open a few apps and show you the app open up speeds and the RAM management. As you can see, we have all the apps in memory, so we do not have any issues regarding RAM management. And did you notice something new? Well, the app open up animations are just great, feels super fresh. Have to say, almost all the animations present on Android P is instantaneous and feels smooth AF. This is why I love stock Android. Now let me show you the home button, well it's not actually a button, it's actually a gesture tab. You can call it that way. If you just pull it to the right and move your finger to the left and right, you can swap between recent apps quickly, which comes really handy I have to say at day to day usage. Yes it takes time to get used to but it's amazing, I mean look at this. And on the recent panel, if you tap on the app icon on the top, it will show you the option for the app info and split screen. And this is how split screen works here as you can see, working super fine. And from recent apps, switching between your recent apps is really really easy now. Like you can switch between back and forth in recent apps like really quick, just boom boom boom, like this. And here is how the home button animations looks like when the gesture is on. Note that Google Assistant and Google Lens as well is working super fine here. And here we have the quick settings panel. The expanding animations are almost similar with Oreo. But the rounded quick toggles looks too good. We have the brightness slider here. And on top, it shows if your phone is in vibrate mode or in do not disturb. Here is how the toggle animations looks like when you tap on them. And yeah, torch is working fine here too. 
You can just edit quick toggles by tapping on this pen icon as it used to and add stuff by dragging and dropping. Night mode is working super fine here as you can see. And by the way the Wi-Fi hotspot is working fine as 5 GHz too so don't worry. We get the carrier name here and we have date over here. Now let me go to the settings panel. And this is how colorful the settings panel looks like. Pretty much reminds me of Dot OS. And now let me show you the battery settings. And as in the end of the day, what matters most is the battery life and performance. So the battery life is quite good over here I have to say as I managed to get almost 8 hours of screen on time and it's been almost like 20 hours since I disconnected my charger which is really really great in my opinion as you were running Android 9. So to see the full battery usage you have to tap these 3 dots over here then tap battery usage and this is the standby drain when I was sleeping this straight line. We have battery percentage showing option over here. We have adaptive battery here which optimizes the battery consumption with each apps I guess. And we do have battery saver too. Next let's go to display settings. We have night light and auto brightness working fine here. I reduced the display size to small. We have ambient display where we get the double tap to check phone which is double tap to wake but it simply doesn't work over here as you can see and the lift to check phone too did not work for me so this ambient display thingy is kind of broken now we have device theme here you can set the UI to be light or dark let me change it to dark but still as you can see the settings panel didn't turn dark but it does take effect to the things like the quick settings panel as you can see it turns dark and takes effect on the app drawer too as you can see. Now let me show you the about section quickly. It shows the device name as Pixel XL as it's ported from Pixel XL and Android version is 9 as you can see. We have July 5th 2018 security patch which is the latest one here and here is the hallucinating Android P easter egg. And one thing that you have to do is you have to turn on developer settings by tapping on the build number several times because otherwise your device's files won't be detected when you connect it via micro USB with your PC. So once you have turned on developer options, go inside it and search for the default USB configuration which is this one, tap on it and set it to file transfer and you are done. We have a system update checker too right here. I don't know if it will actually work or not here as it's actually ported from Pixel XL. And in gestures, we get the swipe on fingerprint sensor for notifications option but frankly this doesn't work I think it's a hardware limitation. Jump to camera works fine but I disabled it. And swipe up home gesture are working fine as you have already seen but you have to flash the gesture fix for it as of now remember that. Double tap to check phone or lift to check phone doesn't work again. And if you check travel right here, it shows that it supports project travel and seamless system updates are supported which is a really great thing. And again, if you don't know how to flash this Android P GSI image on your Redmi Note 5 Pro yet, here's a card for you. And I'm using Magisk Hide here with that, Google Tess is working fine as you can see. Which is awesome, like what do you want more when you are running on the latest and greatest Android version till date. And here is how the new stock calculator app looks like by the way. Which has the scientific calculator thingy by default. Talking about the calculator, well I found a bug while running MI calculator app. Yes I did download it from play store but it's simply not opening or not working and if you try to open it multiple times it just 4 stops which is really sad because I do use this MI calculator app I don't know why it's not running and these are the emojis you are getting with Android P have a look
and if you select a text over here it shows you this kind of panel which has rounded corners and the animations again are pretty freaking dope and while you are like typing something if you scroll the cursor it will show you the text on the top on a box a little bit zoomed in so that you have specific idea where the cursor is which is an amazing thing and does help a lot in day to day usage and yeah it does work with all the apps like whatsapp messenger etc where you can type it will work there now let me show you the camera here and i will give the link of it in the description below as this gsi image does not come preloaded with a camera app taking normal photos working fine but portrait mode is simply not working here and i think even if you take a picture in hdr mode it just captures a normal picture and if you try to go into settings well it will just force close the camera app so yeah camera isn't perfect but at least it's working like both the front and back cameras are working and by the way from the quick settings panel if you want to clear all the apps you need to go all the way to the left then you will see this clear all option just tap on it and every app from recents will be removed well now let me show you the new volume panels from the top you can change it to vibrate or silent or even muted mode and you can control the media volume just like this and if you tap on settings it will take you straight to the sound settings where you can adjust the media volume in call volume ring volume and alarm volume and you can disable stuff like screen locking sound if you feel they are annoying and here is the power menu you have screenshot option too up here which does work fine and the notification heads up animations are just great like i do not hate heads up anymore after seeing these kind of animations and let's assume you are in an app when the screen rotation is actually off then if you turn the phone sideways it will show you an option like this over here and if you tap on it it will rotate the app to landscape but still your screen rotation stays off which is really smart and if you turn it to portrait mode again you have to tap on this rotate thingy once again to bring it back to portrait mode and one more thing that i want to show you guys is the lock screen this is how it looks like pretty simplistic we have the time of course then date and the weather and if the phone is in vibrate or do not disturb mode it will show you up here and look at that animation of the wallpaper guys and it changes the color with time of the day which is really smart and we get this dope looking LTE logo for 4G sim cards and when you receive a call while you are just inside an app like Twitter the heads up of call notification comes like this green and red color buttons for receiving and rejecting calls pretty self explanatory stuff so now it's time for the gaming performance of course i played pubg on android p because why not well as you can see the gaming performance is quite smooth never faced any frame drops or stutters so i have to say the gaming performance is really good you don't have to worry about it and here are the entropy and geekbench scores for you on this android 9 gsi as you can see the entropy score is actually higher than we usually get on miui so to sum it up i would say if you really want to run latest and greatest pure stock android on your redmi note 5 pro definitely you can try it out well even though there are bugs about the camera and a little bit like force closes but you have most of the things like wifi volti 4g data fingerprint scanner hotspot etc working super fine and even the battery life and performance is just great so let me know in the comments down below what do you guys think about this android p gsi that's it for today guys thank you so much for watching consider liking and subscribing if you feel i am worthy enough this is tito from kdn tech signing off and i hope to catch you guys in the next one have a great day